Welcome back with the life of J. Robert Oppenheimer is under the microscope since the release of Christopher Nolan's latest blockbuster. Now a new documentary has coincided with the release shedding more light on the ambitious scientist and the role that he played in developing the atomic bomb. Robert Oppenheimer was the father of the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer feared he was still in a race with the Germans. Whoever gets the bomb first is going to run the entire world. All of that responsibility falling very squarely on Oppenheimer's shoulders. The target then becomes Japan. Now I am become death. The destroyer of worlds. I just watched this doco, it's fantastic. Fascinating. And the director of To End All War, Oppenheimer and the Atomic Bomb, Chris Castle, joins us live now from Los Angeles. Hey, Chris. Chris, congratulations on this incredible piece of work. Talk us through it. Um, why this topic and subject drew you in? Well, I'm a fan of history and I always have been. Um, World War II is one of my you know, favorite periods, for better or worse. Um, but it was just serendipity in that this movie was coming along and NBC Universal wanted to do a documentary to tie into it. And so uh, I got the call and I was, you know, thrilled about it and had been developing a series on the bomb anyway. Mm. Um, so I had a lot of it in my head and I was just, you know, couldn't wait to dive in. Well, it's a, a fascinating documentary, as I said. So who did you speak to and was there anything that surprised you when you delved into Oppenheimer's life? Yeah, we spoke to a whole range of, uh, you know, just great experts in a variety of disciplines. You know, we had... Pulitzer Prize winning historians who had written books about uh, the Manhattan Project and Oppenheimer. We had scientists, nuclear scientists. We had uh, actually a survivor of the Hiroshima attack who was yeah. 10 when, when the bomb uh, exploded. So we got a, a very wide range of perspectives. Uh, uh, Oppenheimer's grandson, Charles, also. Um, there were a lot of things that surprised me. You know, one interesting tidbit that doesn't get talked about much uh, is that he actually was the a uh, person who essentially discovered black holes um, yeah. before, they, you know, 30 years before they were actually confirmed, he wrote a paper um, saying that black holes would be possible. And this went against what Einstein had said. And so he had always hoped he would win a Nobel Prize for that. And he never did because he died before the black hole, uh, the first black hole was officially discovered. Wow. So that was a surprising tidbit. Uh, but it's just, it's a story that's full of surprises from, from beginning to end. Well, the creation of the atomic bomb, I suppose, is what his name really became synonymous with. And he developed a reputation as the father of the atomic bomb. But how did that weigh on him, especially after Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Yeah, it really did. And, you know, um, he was overnight, he was famous for being the father of the atomic bomb. And many people, you know, credited him with essentially winning World War II. And that was, you know, a heavy kind of weight for him to bear in that, you know, he knew, um, you know, that over 100,000 people had been killed by his handiwork. Um, and so in assuming that mantle of the father of the atomic bomb, he also uh, wanted to be the father of arms control and the father mm -hmm. of restraint. Uh, and try to make sure that this didn't, you know, get out of hand. Um, and, you know, he, he really put his reputation on the line to try to slow down the arms race um, and to try to prevent the development of hydrogen bombs, for instance, and was unsuccessful. And so uh, he never publicly expressed his regret. He never admitted that he regretted what he did uh, or his role in making the bomb. Um, but certainly his actions afterwards tell us that it weighed really heavily on him. I mean, we're talking about him more now than we, we've ever had before, and I suppose he's become one of the most important people in the last 100 years on the planet. So after all your research, how would you describe Oppenheimer, and what do we have to learn from his legacy? Yeah, his legacy is really complicated. He, you know, it, it's so interesting that this pacifist, essentially, is the one who gave us the most terrible weapon the world has ever seen. Mm. Uh, and it's really hard to reconcile that dichotomy in him. Um, you know, so he's a really complex figure, as anyone who's seen the movie now also, um, you know, can attest. Um, really, his legacy, as it said toward the end of our film, is the bomb. You know, whatever you think of him, whatever you think of his personal choices or anything he said, we have his bomb. And, you know, in, in that way, his legacy isn't fully determined yet because it's up to us to, you know, either uh, be responsible custodians of this technology and continue to um, avoid using it in, in war or not. You know, um, I don't know if it was Oppenheimer or someone else that said weapons that get made get used. So mm. up to this point, 
after Japan, we've, you know, we've been able to avoid that. But, you know, the question is, will we always? And will history um, repeat? Yeah. Fascinating subject. Um, congratulations again on your work. And we really appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. To end all war, Oppenheimer and the atomic bomb is available to stream on Binge right now. Check it out. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. <laughs> Carl. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?